And so that was fine. I, you know, I didn't begrudge him the fact that he wanted to shoot a particular narrative and he his, he had blinders up and yes men around him saying that, uh, you know, <laughs> that like, yeah, the emperor is wearing clothes for sure, Neil, definitely he is. Um, I didn't begrudge any of that, but what really pick, pissed me off was he went to, to uh, Washington DC the week after and he sit, talked about my community in very belittling terms. He said that uh, Fort McMurray looked like Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, he said that we are committing genocide on the First Nations people up there when in fact the exact opposite was true. Neil Young and Daryl Hanna came to town and, and uh, hired me to do uh, production work with them. And, you know, while Neil was in town, we had this carnival in town called Sustainable, and it was an eco-powered carnival. It ran off the used cooking oil uh, from restaurants wow. in town, and it had a solar powered stage. And I thought, Neil, wouldn't it be great to get you on this solar power stage uh, singing a song powered by sunlight in the heart of dirty oil industry? Right. Just as an artist, that has to appeal to you. Yeah. This juxtaposition of where we're at and where we're going. You know, because to me, the people of Fort McMurray were doing something very similar to what Neil Young was doing and, and have the same kind of environmental consciousness as him. And, you know, Neil had spent over a million dollars working on this hybrid piece of technology that was very didn't work very well. It was very carbon intensive, by the way, because he would only burn one type of the, the cleanest ethanol made at the cleanest plant in the US. So he would have to have diesel burning trucks, bring him this clean <laughs> burning fuel so that he could say his carbon <laughs> emission was low. So his operation was emitting quite a bit of carbon, uh, similar to Fort McMurray. And you know, I didn't begrudge him that fact. It's like, you wanna get to that next energy paradigm, you need to invest time and money and energy into that next paradigm, into that next innovation. And that's exactly what was happening in Fort McMurray, incredible dynamism because of all the capitalism and entrepreneurship going on. And out of that was springing this environmental consciousness of people wanting to cl have cleaner and cleaner energy, more efficient, uh, processes and, and clean up the land because our kids lived there. We, we didn't want dirty, uh, you know, toxins and oil everywhere. And so we were developing clean. And, and so I thought this was an interesting story because here, it, you know, Neil has the opportunity to say, look, these people are doing exactly what I'm doing to get us to the next energy paradigm. And they have an incredible uh, desire to con conserve land and nature and, and get things cleaner and cleaner while simultaneously making the environment better for humans because humans need energy uh, to make their environment better. Uh, otherwise they die horrible deaths from all the pollution that nature gives us through, you know, bacteria, toxins, viruses, pandemics, what, what not. Fossil fuels protects us against that. And eventually we're gonna get past fossil fuels and it's gonna be because of the ingenuity of people like those working in oil industry in Fort McMurray. Uh, so that was what I'd hoped his story would be. And that's kind of what I encouraged him to tell. But of course he didn't want to, to stand on that solar powered stage. He didn't want to talk about the solutions being generated. Um, he didn't want to talk about how Fort McMurray is the most charitable, uh, place per capita in Canada. Uh, and that's precisely because of all the wealth produced there. He didn't want to talk about how he had his son even on the tour with him and son has cystic fibrosis and, and you know, his, he, he lived far past his life expectancy. He was expected to live till 18 and he lived, he was in his thirties and he had your, you know, round the clock nursing care. He was on this diesel burning bus that Neil provided for him so he could be with dad on his adventures. And all that was provided to him thanks to the, you know, you can link a causal chain back to the, the dirty smokestacks of the Industrial Revolution that allowed a guy like Neil to make noise with a, an instrument and his voice and uh, earn a fantastic living because of that. That was all possible thanks to town, the Industrial Revolution and towns like Fort McMurray that were generating wealth and productivity. And so, you know, here Neil was, in my opinion, essentially throwing the very thing keeping his son alive under the bus and, and shooting himself in the foot. So of course, uh, you know, Neil didn't want to shoot that. He wanted to go shoot what I call oil sands porn, all the ugly, nasty <laughs> stuff in the oil sands. The stuff that but, looks bad. Yeah, to please his audience and get some, you know, I, I had a feeling he was he was hitting, hitting on Daryl Hannah at the time. It turns out, I think a year later, he divorced his wife and, and shacked up with Daryl. So, you know, how are you going to get into the heart of a hippie chick like Daryl Hannah? Well, you're going to go on the road and make a 
film decrying dirty oil and, and everything that Neil was doing. And so that was fine. I, you know, I didn't begrudge him the fact that he wanted to shoot a particular narrative and he his, he had blinders up and yes men around him saying that, uh, you know, <laughs> that like, yeah, the emperor is wearing clothes for sure, Neil, definitely he is. Um, I didn't begrudge any of that, but what really picked, pissed me off was he went to, to uh, Washington DC the week after and he sit, talked about my community in very belittling terms. He said that uh, Fort McMurray looked like Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, he said that we are committing genocide on the First Nations people up there when in fact the exact opposite was true. You know?